Hello there everybody and welcome to a new series we are starting with Ark Survival Evolved, the game I've very much been looking forward to and dreading at the same time. But more about that in a moment. Let's start here. We've got William the Ecologist, a tiny, tiny little man. And he is going to be running around on the island here, starting in West Zone 2. And we are going to have this little ecologist man looking at all the different creatures he will find on the island. So without any further ado, let's jump right in. Ah, a strange new world. Now, on this island, we are going to be encountering a variety of extinct creatures. Now, I love all kinds of extinct creatures. Oh, hello. Oh, we're starting with Celef with uh, compies with us, not Celephysis. We're going to punch you. Oh, just run away. Uh, hello. Okay. What a wonderful place to start. We're already being attacked by things like compies. Comsuck Nathus. Now, one thing that I did dread about this game is the fact that I can't... Well, I don't know what organisms we are going to be encountering when we start out. Like, for example, I knew we were going to see dodos. I did not expect to find compies right away. So I have to go very much on what I know about all these different creatures. Now, I love extinct creatures and I have always been fascinated with dinosaurs and all those types of things. But sometimes, you know, the facts get all muddled up and I try to be as factual as I possibly can when we are playing games. Now, let's actually just head up here. Now, I will be carrying on with my grounded playthrough uh, soon. Hopefully on Friday, there will be the probably the second or so last episode coming out for that. So soon we are going to actually finish with Grounded. And then we are just going to be playing Ark for a while. I also hope to start streaming at some point in the next month or two. Uh, things are a little bit hectic at the moment. The honors program at our university is starting and I'm uh, involved with that as well. So that will be taking a bit of my time. But when I have, have time and have settled in, then I will most definitely start streaming a little bit and I will most likely start streaming Subnautica because I know a lot of you guys have been enjoying Subnautica or have enjoyed Subnautica in the past, either played it or watched other people play it. And I haven't, I've never finished my playthrough of Subnautica. So I want to go back there, but the compies are making it a little bit difficult. So let's actually just carry on along the beach here. The objective of this series is obviously to survive, explore the island, encounter all the different creatures we possibly can, and learn more about them as we go along, or teach you guys a little bit more about them as we go along. Okay, so let's just first get some weapons and things going here. I've got my pickaxe, but I really need a few spears. So let's start out. We need wood. Ah, right on cue. Compsognathus. Hey, I now have a spear. I am no longer afraid of you. I will be running into the open. And throwing this at all of you. Okay, so finally, we were able to kill a few creatures. Now, what to do, what to do, what to do. Now, when starting out on the island, I've played this a little bit. Um, not a lot, just enough to to get the hang of it and to know more or less what I want to and can do, I like to level up my movement speed and my weight so that I can run around with a lot of different things. And of course, we all need some armor and we need to start out with the cloth armor. So let me go and make that. Because currently, William the Ecologist is just running around the beach naked, which is not ideal when you want to survive in a dangerous world. So, let's crack on. Okay, we'll need a whole lot of fiber, which of course we'll get by harvesting these berries or berry plants with our hands. And the fibers here would generally be, well, it's probably, probably what is known as bust fiber. And bust fiber being the fiber consisting of the inner part of the bark of plants like this. Not really necessarily these ones. I'd actually get bust fiber more from, not from the banana plant either. Uh, some of the larger trees you would actually be able to get bust fiber from. And I've made rope with bust fiber in, in real life as well. Uh, it's actually quite awesome to do that. If you get the right plants, you can make amazingly strong uh, fibers, uh, amazingly strong rope with that as well. Wisteria, I know it as bl Blorian, which is blue rain is the, is the name for that. Uh, that plant has some amazingly strong bust fibers that you can get from it. Now, while we are crafting, now, William, the ecologist, is just running around 
with a hat. I've got the safari hat skin on here because, you know, it just thematically, it makes sense that he would be wearing a safari hat. He's stranded on an in an unknown world, and the only thing he has of his past life is his hat. And he is very fond of his hat, very attached to his hat, and the hat will be making the journey with him. Okay, now because we need a safish spot, let's actually build a little starter home. Although we are constantly under attack by compies, we are still going to build our starter home in this area. That's a nice little source of meat and hide. All right, we have finished our ramshackle beach house. <laughs> uh, so here it is. Very, very, very basic. It's just an empty big room with a sleeping bag just in case we die. So at least we get to respawn at this spot of the beach, which is a relatively, relatively safe spot. Now, of course, we need to tame something at least. And I think we're going to start with this little one. What are you? You are a female. Ah, okay. So this is, of course, the dodo. Very famous bird. Famous for being extinct. Uh, which, I believe, all the animals on this arc in this game are. Now, dodos over here were believed to have been very stupid, but in fact they were not. Look at those little tiny little wings, though. Oh, there we go. Okay. You are knocked out. Let's give you some berries. Should be quite an easy tame. I have increased the taming rate a little bit, so it shouldn't take too long for the dodo over here to actually be tamed. Already 78%. Now, dodos like this were, of course, known from the island of Mauritius, an island in the Indian Ocean. And look at those tiny, tiny little arms. If I can just hide this, there we go. Look at those tiny arms. Now, they were thought to have been completely useless. However, the dodos used them to steer while running. And you could see that from the one dodo as we actually chased it around. Let's just kill this compi again. We are taking the extinct creatures that have come back to life and we're making them extinct again. Now what I am looking for was the other dodo to punch it to let you see how it runs away. Well, unfortunately, it seems I can't actually find one. So we'll just have to wait for Ruffus over there, the female dodo, to come running towards us. Look at those tiny little arms. Oh, there we go. So now you can actually see the, the wings being used. So they would use that in steering. So if I run like this, they would have used their wings to actually help them steer. Now, the reason they were believed to have been stupid is because they did not run away from humans. You could easily walk up to them and just clobber them to death very, very easily. And there's a good reason for that. They were on an island with basically no predators. And they had never seen humans, and they therefore had no reason to actually fear humans. And this is what we call predator naivete. Let's see, can I pick you up? Yes, let's pick you up. I want to keep you safe. I will put you in the house here. Come. You will be safe in here. Twink. Right. Ah, oh, Raphus. reason she's called Raphus is because Raphus is the genus name of the dodo. And the dodo was the only species in that genus. There is the Reunion Solitaire, which is a, another flightless bird, all eaten to death and uh, went extinct due to human influences, not necessarily only eating to death uh, or eating them to extinction, but it was most likely also due to an introduction of cats and pigs, which would have caught the birds and the pigs would have eaten the eggs. Hmm, can I craft? I like having six spears at least on me so that when we encounter a Dilophosaurus, we can at least defend ourselves by throwing the spears at it, by chucking it in its general direction. So I want to quickly get to that drop over there. Nice little way to get a start, a good start at least on the island here. Get to the loot drops. If of course there isn't something dangerous lurking around here, can't see anything to worry about yet. Whole bunch of basic materials, great. That's going to help. Okay. I'll get back to you later, Dilophosaurus. Next time, probably. 
But yeah, when the dodos or when people arrived on the island of Mauritius, it took less than a hundred years for the dodos to actually go extinct, which is really, really, really a tremendously fast rate of extinction. That's simply because of deforestation, because people obviously landed on the island and they chopped out all the trees. And these birds were very much reliant on the fruit of the trees on the island. This is the male. We want to get you to the female. So come on. I'm gonna punch you out. There we go. Hello, little one. Let's try to tame you with the yellow berry. See if that works. Yes, it does. And so they were very much eating fruit and seeds and things like that, but most likely also have eaten some shellfish. Apparently, that is, there's a likelihood that they would have eaten that as well. This one is called Cuculatus, which is the species name of the dodo. Not in this game, though, but in real life it was Cuculatus. Cuculatus meaning hooded because of the little hood that it seemed to have on the head over here as well. Characterized by this naked face over here and only really a small little keratinized or hardened tip to the beak. This facial or this beak structure is known from only one other group of birds and those are the closest relatives of the dodo the pigeons pigeons and dodos were all relatively related to one another as long as well as the reunion solitaire which also went extinct about the same time as the dodo did also found in very much the same area as the dodo come on cuculatus fine i'll pick you up now let's put you in here with Rafus and you two, just, you know, carry on doing your thing. Now, unfortunately, the Reunion, Solitaire and Dodos are extinct, but their closest living relative would be the Nicobar Pigeon, which is a beautiful pigeon. I think I've got a photo. I'll put it up if I do have. Uh, they are still alive. And then also some of the other ground pigeons, the uh, crowned pigeons, Queen Victoria, crowned pigeons and things like that. Unfortunately, though, a lot of the other species of close relatives of the Dodo are also extinct now that brings me to an interesting point and there are some tech companies that are trying to raise funds to bring back the dodo uh, first of all it will be very difficult and will be extremely expensive and then secondly scientists are wondering whether it should be done and of course there is the quote from Jurassic Park where uh, Ian Malcolm says your scientists were so preoccupied with whether they could they didn't stop to think whether they should and that really holds true still after all these years. Right, so as I've mentioned, while we're walking very slowly towards our base, uh, the scientists being very occupied with trying to do it, uh, trying to see whether they can, not stopping to think whether they should. And the reason for this with the scientists' concern is that, first of all, it is going to cost a lot of money. Um, a lot of scientists are wondering, shouldn't we actually use the money that would have been spent on bringing back the dodo over here? Shouldn't we instead be using that money to conserve the species that are still alive, rather than trying to bring back something that is no longer alive? And that is probably the main concern. Second concern, however, is that, yes, the dodo is extinct, but so too is functionally its environment that it lived in. The forests of Mauritius have seriously decreased in size, and there really isn't a lot of space that the dodo could inhabit they really were confined to only a very few very few places within uh, or on mauritius and so the the ecosystem that they used to live in is no longer around and then of course there aren't any other dodos left and a lot of species like pigeons for example learn certain behaviors from other members of their species and there's no way for the dodo to now learn anything because there are no dodos left. Now, of course, they could learn from other ground pigeons, like the Queen Vict Victoria crowned pigeon, which is a ground uh, pigeon. But unfortunately, they, it won't be as effective as it actually learning from a proper dodo. And so there are a whole bunch of issues with bringing back the dodo. And But the last one, and that one is, I think, the one that a lot of people are, a lot of scientists are worried, worried about, is that if we can just willy-nilly bring back extinct species, should we even bother conserving the rest? Why should we care about conserving creatures or the existing species if we can just bring them back? And as night now falls, 
I do want you guys to still see around me and therefore I'm going to just increase the gamma over here just so that everybody can still see what is going on. I'm going to be doing that uh, whenever it is nighttime since I'm playing single player there's no advantage I'm getting over anybody else uh, but it still allows us to at least have a look around us because if I did not do it this is what it would look like soon it would get very very dark and we want to at least be able to still see as I was saying if we can just bring back anything that goes extinct or went extinct why should we bother conserving things around us and that's a very very egocentric way of looking at the world but so as night has fallen on the island and we have encountered our first extinct creatures we are going to end our video here thank you very much everybody for joining me on this new adventure of ours if you would like to see more of these videos please do subscribe to the channel uh, click on the little bell icon to be the first to be notified whenever there is a new video coming out and remember that i try to release videos every tuesday and friday this friday will be another grounded video and then tuesday another arc video followed by another grounded video and then by that time we will most likely be done with uh, grounded which means that we will just be carrying on with arc until next time then everybody stay safe i will see you all soon